Hi, welcome to this ESS um, revision video for 4.1 Introduction to Water Systems and this is part two of the 4.1 section on ocean currents and we'll be looking at ocean currents in general, their impact on climate and um, El Nino uh, as a focus. So you need to understand what an ocean current is and the idea of currents are basically it links to convection of, um, of water. So what happens is water will get warmed up on the surface and water, warmer water generally rises and then cold water generally sinks. And this change in, in temperature causes the movement of water um, around different parts of the world. So water currents are the movement of water vertically. So I, what we mean by that is um, they're going upwards okay, and horizontally. So it also causes water to move sideways effectively um, in a specific direction. Um, this happens both in um, the surface water at the top, but it also happens deep down in the oceans as well. And this is really important because it's got a vital role of distribution of our energy. It controls our weather, our climate, um, and it's really important to look at, as it actually impacts the energy changes in the atmosphere as well. So ocean currents are not understood by a lot of people, but they have a massive effect on, um, on everything that we, we take for granted on the land. Um, ocean currents then uh, can be surface currents, and you need to know if we're talking about a surface current, that the surface current is the upper 400 metres of water, um, and this is generally affected by the wind um, and the Earth's rotation. So what happens is the wind will drive in a certain direction, so for example there's often a Gulf Stream of wind um, heading across the Atlantic, across that way, okay, but there is also a, um, so whilst the wind's going that way, um, the Earth's rotation also causes some water to go around um, like that in a circular motion as well. Um, there are deep water currents called thermohaline currents, which are obviously deeper than 400 metres. Um, and those deep water currents um, convey, create something called the ocean conveyor belt system, which is vital in moving warm water around and cold water around, keeping our climate as it is. Um, so the UK is largely affected by this conveyor belt coming up here, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so what is a current? Again, okay, what is it? Uh, how does it work? Let's have a little bit more of a detail of it. The two main things that affect currents is the concentration of salt, so whether it's fresh water or salt water, and the temperature. So those are two factors because that affects density of water and that causes water, if it's more dense, to sink or less dense, causes it to float. So if we look at how currents are created, warm water will hold less salt than cold water. So warm water will become less dense. And also because the particles are slightly spread out in physics terms, but warm water holds less salt, so it becomes less dense. Cold water becomes more dense and will sink as a result. Um, and as warm water rises, um, cold water is then drawn up from the depths to replace it. So if you've got, um, let's say, the sea here, okay, if the water here gets warmed up, or if it gets um, if if it gets less dense because of less salt for some reason, the warm water rises and moves that way, and then colder water has to come up from the depths to replace it as a result. Cold water, which has risen. Um, is then replaced by the warm water which sinks so this warm water has to then go down to replace the cold water and you get this current setup and as a result the water circulates um, this to me is a very very important thing to learn i think that this could be a key part in a big question in section um, warm water um, then there are two sorry currents we need to know about cold water currents which run from the poles to the equator so they're represented by the blue here which are obviously carrying cold water towards the equator and warm water currents which take the warm water from the equator towards the now water has an impact on climate and ocean currents have an impact on climate because water has a high specific heat capacity so what that means is it is the amount of energy it takes to make um, water change its temperature as a result 
water um, coastal areas will have a more stable climate because the temperature of the water in the sea doesn't change very often and that then impacts the land nearby. So you can see different places. So here we've got two uh, different places that you may or may not be familiar with. Um, and they have the same, they're in the same latitude area. So i.e. they're the same um, distance from the, um, the equator. Um, but if you look at the difference from the sea, one kilometer and that temperature range over the year is only 20 degrees but if you go far into the middle of the uh, I think america it is 420 kilometers and that temperature range over the year can go higher to lower to 40. so what i mean by that is let's say this one and i'm making these temperatures up i don't know this for sure this one may go from 10 degrees c at its coldest in the winter to 30 degrees c at the warmest in the summer whereas this one might go from minus 10 degrees c to uh, 30 degrees c in the summer so the range is greater because the ocean isn't near it and therefore it's not having that cooling effect or that warming effect um, the local climate, as I said, is driven by currents, um, and basically currents um, can be warm water, which can be 100 kilometres wide and 1,000 metres uh, deep, and th those currents, for example, make Europe warmer. So we get water from this uh, conveyor belt here, coming up from the Gulf of Mexico up to Europe and that warms us up and the UK up as a result. And it really does make a difference. If you think about the UK and the temperatures in the UK, the UK is obviously here. I'll change that colour so you can see it on the map. The UK's average temperature, you know, in the summer is about 25, 30 degrees. In the winter, it might be five, six degrees. Well, if we were far away from the sea, we'd be a lot more colder. So, for example, if you go up to some of these areas here, it's much more colder because they're far away from the ocean. Um, so local climate is largely driven by currents, but this could cause an issue for us because this northern Atlantic conveyor belt, which is bringing up this warm air from us from um, from the uh, Gulf of um, Mexico, is potentially slowing down due to climate change. Um, and this is because what is happening is these ice caps in Greenland um, are melting much, much more fresh water than used to is going into the oceans. So this fresh water um, entering the oceans as a result is making the water less dense, causing it to sink down much sooner and they're um, sorry, preventing it from sinking down. So normally the, the water gets heavy, it gets cold and it sinks, but because it's got fresh water in it, there's less salt and the water isn't sinking as a result. So what I'm trying to say here is normally, if you imagine you have the water, okay, normally, um, and let's say this bit is uh, the Iceland, okay, normally what's been happening is the water's been drawn up from from Mexico, okay? Then it cool um, it cools down um, as it hits the ice caps, and um, what happens is it sinks as a result. But what is happening is because um, fresh water is coming off those ice, that ice that is melting, this bit is no longer happening, okay? So therefore, this is then not drawing this up, which is not drawing this up. Now, is this happening? Um, well, as a result, less water is returned to the Gulf of Mexico, and we do think this could be actually starting to happen. Um, so colder water, um, sorry, colder long-term climate could happen in Europe as a result if this was triggered. Now, there are some different things that you need to know about. It's the different oscillations um, that happen in weather. And one of those examples is the Northern Atlantic Oscillation. So this one is um, a very particular example in, in the textbooks and specification. So Northern Atlantic Oscillation basically explains why sometimes in Europe we have really cold winters and sometimes we have milder winters. So what we call a high index year happens, and that is when there is a, um, um, a lower pressure over Iceland. Okay, so you've got a lower pressure over Iceland. So what we're saying here is Iceland, which effectively, if you think about it, is sort of there, okay, has a lower pressure, but the Azores, which is islands in the middle of the Atlantic, 
has higher pressure. Now, when that happens, we get winds that blow from um, from uh, east to west, and, and that warm weather comes along from um, America and it comes along and that gives us milder winters as a result and we get slightly cooler wetter summers but when that oscillation when this sometimes changes we have low index years which we have less pressure difference as a result and when we have less pressure in index as a result there's less direct westerly wind instead the wind goes up through sort of Greenland Iceland and then into Europe and as a result it brings those colder winters um, and often causes heat waves in the sun. So you really need to know about the um, oscillation also of El Nino and this is the one that I would focus on particularly. Um, so what happens is we have normal years okay, and we have El Nino years and basically in normal years the wind drives um, there's higher pressure in the eastern Pacific, which is uh, like America, South America, Peru, places like this, than the west. So the winds blow west most of the year. And what that does is it causes the water also to move west, the warmer water. And because that warmer water moves west, it causes cold water to move upwards as a result, bringing nutrients up and maintaining high levels of nutrients in the sea. But on an El Nino year, what happens is the, water, the wind changes direction. So the wind will actually go this way, change my colour pen, sorry, okay, driving warm water that way towards the um, coastline of South America. And that means that the, um, the water arriving here is warm and, the, and then moves down like that. So you don't get that upwelling happening as a result. Now this has some big, big impacts. So um, on El Nino years, which is um, this, what is happening here, okay, we get um, quite big impacts because there's a lack of nutrients being brought up from the deep water. Fish stocks and particularly anchovy stocks, which is um, key in that area, um, collapse. Um, you get more storms and floods flowing in because the wind's coming in towards Peru and seabirds will often be lost because again the food chains collapse because of a lack of and you can see here the direct effect on anchovy supplies so um, high up here El Nino struck anchovy supplies fell down happened again here a few years later they hadn't recovered and it fell down again and it happened here so it can have quite an impact on the now, this is important to link back to ocean productivity. So ocean productivity and what affects whether there's a lot of life in an ocean is quite important. So the limiting factors in ocean productivity are nutrient levels and light intensity. So obviously at the surface of the ocean, there is a lot more sunlight and therefore there's a higher level of productivity. But as the light decreases, so does the amount of plant productivity, life in the ocean, i.e. plankton productivity. Um, and basically the phytoplankton at the surface um, absorb all the nutrients that um, are at the surface and they get eaten and so on and so on. Um, but if the light level is low, that will sort of stop as a result. So on a normal year, what is happening is there's something called the Humboldt Current. There is an upwelling of nutrient-rich cold water from the algae that die and sink to the bottom of the ocean. So what happens is because the wind is going that way, the warm water goes that way as well, and therefore the cold water is brought up, bringing all these nutrients um, from the ocean depths. That then allows the animals that live in this area to have a really deep, deep healthy food chain and obviously if you've got lots of nutrients you'll get lots of fish you get lots of predators uh, coming up as a result and now the Nino year the opposite happens the warm water comes in here and you might think well sure that's a good thing but it isn't because that warm water then causes the water to move down this way so there are no nutrients that are, so the nutrients that are normally coming up get cancelled and they, they can't come up anymore so therefore there's no nutrients in the ocean and the food chain collapses as a result but also because of all these winds moving across you get storms and you get destruction along the coastline 
Now El Nino has a global impact as well, because El Nino will change the weather as a result in different parts of the world. So when we have El Nino, often we get droughts happening in Africa, Australia and Indonesia. Um, it can, that can cause forest fires as a result. Places north um, um, of, well, particularly north, but also other parts of the world can also end up having heavy storms. And we're even in India, there's been absence of monsoons, which can affect food production. So El Nino does have a global important and this can obviously then affect livelihoods yield of crops etc now it's important to state that el nino is not due to climate change but it increases the impact of um, of climate change because if farmers are struggling already due to drought and then a drought hits el nino's impacts will magnify that um, climate change impact